here on the left. Shin on the right and spawning over here on Solaris to get things going. It is Team Liquid's Cure. And his opponent all the way in the upper right hand corner, it's Shin. For a while, I felt that Cure kind of suffered from that idea that he was a bit predictable at times, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I really felt that he was very good at the meticulous, very, very standard Terran plays. Like, I would watch some of the greats, like the Marus in the world, the Beyonds, but it's like, I can't really replicate this. But with Cure, I was like, oh, I love this, uh, what, what he does, you know? He's just very smart about how he approaches the game. But recently, in quite a lot of his matchups, he's been really spicing things up. So. Uh, we even got to see that against uh, Clem a little bit. He was risky with a reactor build early on. Then he was like, okay, I've got a barracks on the map. I've seen far more two racks out of him recently in TVTs as well. And here, to start things off against Shin, we've got a two racks on the low ground going for that Reaper build. Yeah, absolutely. This is a build that Bjorn popularized some time ago. These days, we see anywhere between two to five Reapers or so. Generally speaking, it's three, but it depends on what the Terran players are feeling like and how much damage they actually get done. We'll have to see if, for example, Shin decides to go for a quick third hatchery here, at which point you may just be able to get away with only two of them. But this is a, an opener that can usually keep you safe while also getting a, a solid economy on the back of it. Yeah, and it's one of those where you really get to dictate the pace of the game right from the get-go as well. Like, you get to delay the third a little bit, force out a few extra lings than the Zerg probably wants to make, and every Zerg on the planet at a high level is practiced against this sort of thing. Having a little uh, a little self-neck massage going on <laughs> over there uh, as he's tapping that keyboard. But I like this for an opening in general. It just allows you to play the game that you've practiced and not so much your opponent. Yeah, absolutely. You get some nice follow-up scouts as well. So if Shin decides to get aggressive with, say, Roaches a little bit later on into the game, Kira will usually have at least one Reaper remaining to get some follow-up scouts in. And until Link Speed is done, you can put in quite a bit of work. And obviously at this point, well, Zerk Link Speed hasn't even started yet. First Reaper going straight towards the natural expansion. At this point, Shin is making six Zerklings in total, but soon, right now, yeah, he'll figure out exactly what he's playing against. Absolutely. He did get to spot with the Overlord as well, directly across the map, very safe for the time being as well. Second gas going up at home, quite early for Cure, so not like a gigafast 3cc uh, to get things going. But yeah, I'm already going to be interested. Oh, one drone. Ah, that's not what you want. A lot of no. Zerg players these days, they're very quick with the Spore Crawler making, but Shin there suffering a well, first blood of the match. Yeah, sometimes you run out of minerals for just a moment, but Shin had about 150 there, so I guess he was just a little bit slow on the keyboard, and that's not a great sign. If anything, it's a mental hit. Now the Queen is also taking a lot of damage. Shin is getting a lot of gas behind this, by the way. Yeah. Like very often you take guys off gas, so a Baneling Nest is his answer to this. That to me spells that Shin does not like to be put in the corner. And he wants to go, go, go with something maybe a little bit crazy. And if you do play against Shin, you have to know that this is a possibility that he, he doesn't want to be kept at bay. So Zerklings are misplaced? waiting on the high ground. Yeah, it's misplaced. So he actually canceled a queen to be able to go for this third base. This third though is really just here for larva production. He's gonna go for a bailing bust right here in game number one of this series. Not a strategy we see very often in 2024. At this point, Link Speed is done. So what does Terran do? He brings most of the Reapers back home. Does he have any clue about what's happening? I don't think he does at all. And all those add-ons are exposed on the outside as well. So even if you don't break through the depot and kill your opponent oh. right there and then, and Cyclone's first unit of choice as well. I mean, yeah. obviously they can move and shoot, which is great, but Shin just checking things out. But so far, this is a billion percent unscouted. Three CC on the way for Cure as well. And the first two Cyclones... Oh, no, no, no! He lifts up, he knows what he's against. Nice grenades over there. <laughs> One of them across that little wall off. I mean, that Stimpak upgrade is never going to finish. The question is, how much damage is Shin going to be able to do? And I think at this point, he's in so much trouble. Cure, that is. Uh, both of the Cyclones end up getting surrounded, and I think that's pretty much it. That is pretty much it. And Cure's little face over there in the camera. Saw him biting his lip, but he looks so calm right there while he's absolutely getting murdered in game. Right now, trying to keep all his SCVs alive. There is one Bailey left in the mix, and that guy has a mission, and boom, he did just that. Takes out a lot of SCVs, and GG. GG. Wow. Last two stage matches with a very, very explosive game one. I like how we're discussing mid-game timing attacks, late game, and all the other strategies that we've been seeing a lot as of late, but 
This is a build order straight from 2010, right? Nothing all too spicy, nothing all too crazy. This is essentially the first Zerk all-in we ever saw. Yeah, I remember Demaga doing it to me, yeah. like the first <laughs> time it was ever done kind of thing, long, long, long time ago. But yeah, this was this was just brutal. Cure had no idea. Obviously, I like how that mailing turned around to still go into the depot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was like, hey, I've, I've got a mission, and then that's blowing this bad boy up. But yeah, very, very cool, sharp opening by Shin. And, you know, it's not super often done. Like, very often, the Zerg kind of, you know, recedes, and it's like, all right, I'm going to be a punching bag for a little bit. I'm going to get my third up a little bit later than I'd like. But Shin was just, he was not about that life. And that that misplaced third that you were absolutely right. It's never, ever going to be used. And look at Shin, that little cheeky chappy. Yeah, <laughs> not as well. He's happy with himself. <laughs> Yeah, that is not a, a build order you're going to be able to bring out twice in a series, I don't think. But at the very least, that's a quick 1-0 lead right here in this best of three. Yeah, Kira not all too happy with that, right? It's one of those things where you could have scouted it, but you have to sacrifice your Reapers for it, which makes the follow-up harassment from Terran so much weaker. But he didn't even really see the third. He never saw the main base. I guess he just got a bit too greedy. It's one of those things that's kind of tricky. Like, with those three Reapers early on, you can bounce into the main at some point and just be like, hey, you're still mining gas? Because if you're mining a lot of gas, you get to click on the extractor, see what's actually going down. You could be like, all right, there's quite a few things I have to worry about here. But there was none of that. And then the fact that this map, there's speed zones in the middle, there's not that many ledges to jump up in the middle. He was like, okay, I'm going to be safe with my Reapers because... I'm not going to lose to anything, right? And then it was like, <laughs> hold on a minute. <laughs> um, but I, I guess like if I'm being very critical of him, having at least one Reaper out and about just to spot things, because from that point on, it's not as if you really need to keep them alive. He just sent them completely back home. So definitely uh, dropped the ball a little bit there. And yeah, he, he absolutely got bit in the butt. Yeah, making assumptions about what the Zerg normally do in that situation. Ultimately, that's gonna give Shin a nice little advantage. Well, game number two, we find ourselves on the map Alcyone. Bottom left-hand corner, it's Kyar. <laughs> and spawning over in the top right, representing Mystery Gaming, it is Shin. <laughs> Bringing quite a bit of heat in game one here, and Kyar looks like he's opting for something so far, fairly similar. Yeah. It has to be said that on this map in particular, there's definitely a few spots where you can hunt overlords as they cross across the map fairly often with a forward barracks like this. But all things said and done, I think it's most likely he's going to go for that Reaper opening again. Yeah, we have that little overlord meta in the game too, right? Where Zerg players purposely start scouting in different ways just to try and dodge any of those marine snipes. Nah, it's going to be a double barrack start here once again. So Kyar apparently, well, we'll have to see what he decides to switch up because I can imagine that Shin right now, when he sees what he's going up against, he may just he may just go for it again. It's I mean, he, first this time, but. He's, he's the kind of guy that absolutely would. I wouldn't put it past him at all. Yeah. Like, Shin is one of those players, I remember back in the day when Cowboy used to make those first-person view videos, like with the keyboards and stuff, Yeah. Uh, back when he was called Ragnarok. Shin is incredibly fast, like really fast. So. You know, you can't let him just run away with the game or anything, but when it comes to both these players heading into the mid and late game, like, Cure is the guy that I favor. So him going for a risky build like he did in game one, definitely interesting by him. <laughs> Here's some of that APM you were talking about. First person view of what this uh, Shin's personal view right here. So that's him making Zerklings and drones for the most part. Re-rallying a bunch of times just to get the, the hands nice and warm. These links are going to be able to go across the map, though, in a path that the Reapers will not scout. So the Reapers, they are going to be running across the map momentarily. There we go. That's the first one. And Ragnarok now knows what he's playing against, sir. Shit now knows what he's playing against. This is one thing that Terrans, when they do open two racks Reaper, don't mind going up against. It's like, you get that CC up, you've got a wall going down over there. Worst case scenario, you bring one of your Reapers home kind of thing. The thing is, this build from Zerg also allows a lot of aggressive possibilities afterwards. You can get like a early Roach Warrens and things like that, and it can be a, a real bundle. But this game, Cure heads immediately into this main base, and he's like, Oh, okay, okay. So what's going on here? You've already got a queen out way earlier than you should. And now he's going to keep these Reapers back at home, most likely realizing that something's up. I think he's going to be able to kill the Overlord as well. He's going for a Marine right now. Yeah, you can lift off one of those barracks, although the Zerklings are waiting. This is Shin trying to get lucky. It's not going to happen. And that's going to cost him quite a bit 
a lot of those Zerklings will end up going down. Command Center, of course, on the back of this. Shin trying to catch up in that worker count. But this is a little bit of that early game rock, paper, scissors, right? You have to make a choice as to what sort of strategy you want to play. If this would have been a Command Center first, for example, which is a build we see all the time, especially in tournament play, Cure would have been in a world of trouble. Absolutely. Like, it's it's the same opening from Cure, but he's dealt with everything differently. Like, going to that main base, he got to know that it was a pool first, late gas and all that. Got to see the queen out was early. So there's a lot of information that he just picked up from dealing with it differently and what he did with his Reapers initially. And here, we'll get confirmation of what's actually going on in this game. Oh, no. He told the Reapers <laughs> alive as well. Nice play. I actually thought that accidentally with that first grenade, he put the queen in such a position that she was going to be able to get the final hit in. But luckily for him, there was another grenade putting her back up in the air. That, that would have been brutal. And right now, obviously, a far better opening for Cure, right? Like, he's, he's not taking damage from that pool first, Shin. You kind of wound yourself a little bit to get stuff done. And we've got to also point out Alcyone was Cure's map pick here in this best of three. So he's obviously a guy that likes to play on this map. Zergs, they have to play on this map in this kind of map pool against Terrans. But mm -hmm. yeah, just a cool start so far. So going into Reacted Hellions afterwards, that will permanently grant him quite a bit of map control. It's hard to deal with three Reapers and Hellions and then a Liberator as well. I like everything that he's showing. Yeah, I think the Liberator makes a lot of sense here. Sometimes the Benchy can be a little bit risky, right? Because, I mean, it, it can be a little bit expensive, I suppose. If you skip it, uh, the Benchy that is against a normal Zerg opener, you can be against, for example, a bunch of Roaches, you can be in quite a, quite a bit of trouble. But in this particular instance, with this opener here from Shin, the odds of him going Roaches are pretty much zero as far as like a timing attack goes. So going just straight up into the Liberator makes a lot of sense. Shin, uh, yeah, he's going to have to play very defensively here while Terran is just simply building up their eco. I like this, by the way, from Cure. Like, I'm the kind of guy that I'd have sent my Liberator over there just to get the Overlord kill for sure. But he's like, you know what? Let's keep that private for now. I've had Vision on the middle tower for a long time. I do have a little squad in the north to clear up creep or cause some uh, comeuppance. But Shin, with decent scouting, decent placed Overlords, does get to spot that. And Cure, as a result, will change the path as well of that Liberator. Right now, Cure is going to be testing Shin at every possibility here, just trying to deal a little bit of damage. And I mean, this isn't a one-two punch from him. Like, he's got Stim done, double Medivacs as well online. It's just a very clean macro build. Yeah, we're going to go double Evolution Chamber here together with a Baneling Nest before the lair. So yeah, exactly. We do start up the lair here eventually. The thing is, of course, that Baneling Speed is now going to be relatively late, all things considered. Oh. And the upgrades are also not all too early. Now, this is a nice snipe, though. Getting that? Okay, he's not going to be able to get the kill, it seems, but just weakening it here is going to make it much harder for Cure to get anything done. That's, that's a big deal, actually, like getting that amount of damage done on it. I mean, those might be his creep spread queens, so it might slow down that, but now you can just kind of leave two queens in your main, and that's exactly what he does. He's like, hey, you're not getting out of here, mate. And uh, I like so far how Shin's been handling a lot of this, because it wasn't the oh. easiest opening to get out of. Okay. He could have probably sniped his base right away, but it's just barely outside of the vision range of those Hellions and those Reapers. Yeah, he just <laughs> barely doesn't see it. There's, in the meantime, yeah, push over here on the right side of the map too. So he knew that there was going to be a fourth base. It was either going to be at three o'clock or over, well, where it's at right now. He could have probably canceled both. Luckily, Shin here, he managed to get away with it. So far, Cure's doing a decent job though. Five drones, getting out with those medevacs as well. And he's got that Liberator in the back of the base, just acting kind of like an Oracle here, where it's like, you have to respect it. So far, these Hellions and Reapers, they've been very non-committal, right? Like, they've just been on the map, dealing with a few creep tumors now, which is nice. Three bases up and running for both of them. Drone count, not too scary yet though from Shin, but he is trying to- Oh, he gets something happen. Yeah, surround oh. on all of those units. Medevac goes down too. That's super painful though. For the Terran, because you're really playing that tempo game here. Now, of course, Terrans will be more than happy to play that long drawn out macro match if they really need to, but usually that's like a second choice, right? You only really go into that if you absolutely need to. In this case, yeah, I think Cure doesn't really have much of a choice. No, he really doesn't. Like, getting that shut down, that is your middle map control. Like, I think he's still just got a Reaper situated on that tower, so he can see if something does move out. But for the foreseeable future, this is just going to be about Shin trying to get that creep going and trying to reduce the amount of damage that he can take. And he's been very good about his upgrades here, Loka. I saw as soon as that plus one finished, it was like, oh. boom, plus two attack. So these pushes over here from the Terran are not really allowed to do this much damage. Getting a queen already, creep threat's still not really going in that direction of the map yet either. 
It is, by the way, going to be Hydrilling Bane right here for Shin. So nothing all too fancy. None of that mass Hydra style that we saw from Scarlet earlier today as well. She basically ended up just playing mass Hydra on this map. Uh, yeah, I, that was... <laughs> I was talking to the Seltzer in the uh, green room. I was like, yeah, this is pretty weird. Like, this is very weird. But the fact <laughs> that she got allowed to get away with that. Yeah. Okay, okay. So this is three extra barracks. So going up to eight barracks here is Cure. This could be some very old school-esque style where you're just going pure bio tank and just kind of marching across the map. Nice little snipes here for his trouble. And he will start trying to deny this creep because it's getting very, very far across the map here. Absolutely. Still one Medivac here on the right side of the map. That one's been hanging out for a little, a little while. I think the Liberator, by the way, must have gone down eventually. Oh, it's still alive. Oh, it's still there. Still Can't even see it on the minimap, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually thinking that Cure's getting to a point where he's like, you know what, maybe minute 15 is when I'm eventually going to use that, because you know, forgot about it by then, right? And I mean, honestly, that kind of thing, if you sync it up with attacks that are happening, because yeah. I see a big blob of red in the middle, on the bottom right, in the top left, very, very far away. Like, Cure's setting himself up for a lot of potential to deal damage here, and maybe that's going to be his time strike with the Liber Liberator as well. Drilling Claws coming up right now as well for the Terran player. That's going to give him some nice speed improvements for his Widow Mines. There's the Infestation Pit as well. So do you think we're going to see Lurker play here from Shin? Or? I mean, a, a lot of Zergs, they can go into Lurker, but they're more often just going for the Hydrolink Bane comp and then surviving and maybe killing the opponent. I know that Shin isn't a guy that chooses to go into the late game. Getting those Hive upgrades is a really big deal, but now Shin is feeling comfortable oh. to get on the map. Won't get that kill. There are fights happening here, there, and everywhere now. Yeah, a couple of the Banelings there did connect with some of that bio army, but luckily Oi. kind of picked up on it. Loses one of the Medivex over here in the meantime. Planetary Fortress, I think this is the first time that the fourth base gets spotted. Fifth Command Center over here too. This could actually be a very juicy target for Shin. He's gonna commit to it. This is expensive for the Zerg, but if he can get both bases, Oi. it'll be massive. That's a massive kill. No cancel either on that CC, and Shin, he's running away with this game, man. Like, these tanks, there's one situation on that high ground over oh. there, but... Cure is getting absolutely torn a new one over here. I mean, this is so much Zerg absolutely everywhere, and he should have been fully aware of how Shin plays the game. He is not being allowed to breathe, and I feel he's got him massively on the ropes. That is so many Banelings just marching up this ramp right now. Now, by the way, the Hive starts up in the middle of this engagement, so Shin is happy to continue playing. I guess this was mostly just him testing the waters, and he found a very vulnerable base. More than 50 SCVs go down in just a matter of seconds. And I think if Shin just sends all of his reinforcements over here, he may just be able to obtain the victory right here and right now. What just happened? Like, Kyo was not ready for this at all. And he saw that army moving out to the south side of the map, going to his fourth base. Like, this is not the cure that we usually see in this matchup. And Shin, he's just looked better. Yeah. He was struggling against Bunny on this exact same map not that long ago. And in my mind, Cure is uh, a little bit stronger in this matchup than Bunny overall. Okay, now that would mind did end up killing about as much Terran as it killed Zerg. Uh, at this point, Cure essentially has to win the game with this army, right? But how in the world are you going to fight Baneling's own creep? It's going to be very difficult. I mean, this just shows how much Shin committed to that attack. The fact that he's not, like, remaxing <laughs> very quickly. The Liberator, by the way, went down. Finally, finally went down. But Shin, he's fairly well off after this. 83 drones is a pretty damn solid number. Getting the plus three carapace as well. By the time that comes online and adrenal glands and stuff, Cure, he's not going to be a hang on. This is a nice little body block with those Marauders stopping the bleed to some degree, but... It's 29 uh, SCVs, man. What are yeah. you going to do with 29 SCVs? We only have three command centers here as well in total. He's got those eight racks still, so I guess he can try and go for an all-in. Generally, I don't like the timing of this Lurker then very much, but I think in this game it's very clever. As long as Shin just holds whatever attack is coming next, he's going to be uh, in a game-winning position, right? So I, I don't see how... Cure is ever going to be able. To... Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't see how Cure is ever going to be able to get a counter against Lurkers out. I'm looking at supplies now. Like Cure is catching up somewhat, which yeah. is his army's big. It, it's really weird to say. Like that just shows how much Shin committed to those attacks. Like that was a lot of banelings that he really wanted the game over right there and then. But now he's got to work to kill him a little bit, but. I feel he's got the tools to do so because he smells blood in the water here, Loco. And I mean, Cure, he does not want to be sat defending against this. This is a fairly small ragtag army over here. And Shin, look, he's got even <laughs> more on the defense and 13 yeah. workers. 
13 lurkers. He's just slowly getting all the upgrades, using those Zerklings to buy himself a bit of time. As long as Terran doesn't get a fourth base up and running, and Curie is not even remotely close to that, I, I don't see how he's going to be able to contest Shin in the late game. So I, I think Cure has to commit. Now, obviously, he doesn't know that Lurkers are just about to come out because he's been dropping mules, but I think that, that window may have just passed, right? Like, how in the world is he going to fight this? I mean, those are GG Lurkers, you know? Like, as soon as they come on the screen and they burrow in his face, I even getting a Nidus oh. here, this is, this is Shin hitting his comfort zone, you know? Like... This is an army that requires a lot of precision, the correct units to deal with. And look at that, <laughs> that that you don't deal with with just pure bio, unless you make a grave, grave error. But he's getting ready for a pretty damn sick concave over here. And that is one thing that can maybe bind him. But remember, he doesn't have orbitals for days. And there's even oh. units coming in from the south here. But oh. <laughs> I mean, that is a sick concave by Cure, but it's just not enough. There's too much damage. and. My goodness, Shin, with a surprise upset over here, taking out Cure, and that is the most meager fist bump of all time, but that keeps Shin's chances alive in this group. Very